All right, so let's clean this up a little bit because it's getting out of hand. Um, so let me rewrite the equation. So what we just did was we said that, um, let's write it up here. So what we have is we have nitric, nitrous acid and we have the sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Oops. and the potassium hydroxide. And we just calculated that we have uh, 4.00 millimoles of nitrous acid. And we've just added, when we added uh, five milliliters of 0.2 molar, we added 0.110 uh, millimoles of potassium hydroxide. Now, what happens here? Well, you guys know. The uh, hydrogen ion from the acid is going to react with the hydroxide ion and form water. And then we have, uh, what we're going to have is the salt, potassium nitrite. But I'm not interested in the potassium ion because it's a neutral salt, just like we saw previously. And so what I know is this, is that I'm going to lose all of the... Um, strong base potassium hydroxide millimoles and I'm going to lose 1.00 uh, millimoles of nitri nitrous acid. So what I have left here is 3.00 millimoles of nitrous uh, acid. I have zero of this. I, water is formed but we're not worried about it because it's a pure liquid. And then the nitrite ion has increased by 1.00 millimoles. Because one of the one mole one millimole of the nitrous acid was converted to the nitrite ion. So the easiest way to solve this problem is to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, which is pH equals pKa plus the log of the conjugate base which is the nitrite ion over the acid which is the nitrous acid. All right and so the Ka for uh, nitrous acid is 4.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. You have to look that up in the table in chapter 16. So we're going to have the negative log of 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4. And then we're going to say plus the log of 1 divided by 3. We can do that because this is millimoles and that's millimoles. So log of 1 divided by 3. And that will give us our pH. Okay, so let's get the calculator. And we get... Um, negative log of uh, 4.6 exponential negative 4 plus the log of 1 divided by 3. We hit enter and we get 2.86. Now, if you're following along in the book on pages of uh, 764 and 765, they come to the same conclusion here, uh, but they don't use millimoles. But you can see the advantage of using millimoles is you're working in milliliters. Why not work in millimoles? Then you don't have 1 times 10 to the negative 3 here, and you don't have 3 times 10 to the negative 3, which enters more air into the problem. So why not just... Um, Use millimoles. Learn it. It's easy. Um, again, bottom line is molarity equals moles per liter, which is also equivalent to millimoles per milliliter. All right, so that one took a little more time. So this one definitely takes a lot of time to calculate. This last one is a give me, though. The pH at one-half the equivalence point. 
So you know the gra the uh, pH plot looks like this. Oh, that's a terrible one, but there it is. And then we have uh, pH on this axis and volume on this axis. Well, if the equivalence point is exactly where you've added just enough of this to consume, or in this case, enough potassium hydroxide to consume all of that, then one half is where you have equal concentrations of both the acid and its conjugate base. And we know if we look at the Henderson-Hasselbach, if this part is both of the what's in the numerator and denominator have the same value, then this becomes the log of 1. And so therefore this becomes 0. And so if I want to know what the pH is at half the equivalence point, that means the pH equals the pKa, all right? So all we have to do is take negative log of the Ka, negative log of uh, 4.6 exponential uh, negative 4, close the parenthesis, and we get 3.34. So the pH at half the way to the equivalence point is 3.34. All right, so that concludes this problem. You can see these are long problems, they're multi-step, um, but the bottom line is it starts as a stoichiometry problem, and you say, well, I don't know stoichiometry. Well, that means maybe refresh your memory of stoichiometry problems in chapter four, um, but you gotta do a stoichiometry problem. You gotta have a bounce, you always have to have a bounce chemical equation when you do uh, a titration. And then convert things to moles and um, look at what's being consumed, what's left over. And then when you get a ratio of um, the um, conjugate base over the acid, plug that in. Now, some of you may be saying, well, this is in moles, this isn't in concentration units. And these brackets mean molarity. Well, what we can assume here is the volume is the same for both the conjugate base and the acid. The volume is the same. So we can use the ratio of mole, millimoles to millimoles here, or moles to moles, because the volume is considered to be, um, assumed to be constant here, all right? So that concludes this problem. And um, again, my next video, I'll be talking about uh, solubility equilibrium. Thank you.